So today I want to share with you the meaning of uh, hospitality or hospitality as the embodiment of Christ or Christ's presence in and with us. I like being the disciple of Jesus and following Jesus, but I think being the disciple of Jesus is beyond following Jesus. My father was the first convert of the missionaries in our hometown, and the first song he learned from the missionaries was um, in Amharic, or I follow Jesus, the, the world is behind me, and the cross is in front of me, and I follow Jesus. I know you all know that song. So it's just following Jesus. So I, I was raised singing that song, and I believe that, 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 you know, being the disciple is following Jesus. And I believe, and also I want to preach that today, it is being and living in Jesus, and Jesus in us. In today's reading, Jesus says, whoever welcomes you, the disciples, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me through you, welcomes the Father, the one who sent me. So in the church calendar, we are in the season of the Holy Trinity. And the mystery of the Trinity seems sometimes unclear and confusing. But today's reading brings the embodied and practical presence of God to and with us. So the mystery of the Holy Trinity is its unique relational presence in us, in the world and God's creation. God the Father reveals Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ glorifies God, and the Holy Spirit demonstrates and advocates for God's creation in her relation to the Father and the Son. So theologians call this relationship or presence the dance of the Holy Trinity. So we confess and believe that we are Trinitarian because we believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is one, and there, they are one in three, and their circle Trinitarian presence in us, in the world, models the relational and embodied presence we all need to do and be as the disciples of Jesus Christ. So how can we today live and practice this Trinitarian life in the everyday? What does it mean to be a Trinitarian? What does this Trinitarian God models for us? Today's gospel brings this mysterious presence of the Holy Trinity to our life. We live and experience this relational nature of the Trinity with our hospitality and practices in the everyday. Our hospitality and welcoming energy and presence and dependency on one another in this world make our relationship with God, the Holy Trinity, embodied and lived. You see and experience Jesus in me, and I share Jesus. I feel and experience Jesus in you. The love and the hospitality you do for the disciples of Jesus, for one of us to one another, enable us to encounter the presence of Christ. That presence enables us to feel the embodied presence of God. So the mystery of the Holy Trinity is not far. Instead, it is in us and with us. Our hospitality and justice work and praxis and prayer to the world, our advocacy work for God's creation makes the presence of the Holy Trinity lived in this world. As Lutherans, we love grace and the grace of God through Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit fulfills our salvation. There is nothing we can do to do this work. And yes, this faith is not ideology. It's not 
It doesn't end here or there. Again, because Christ is in you. Because Christ is in me. And Christ is embodied. So receiving Christ in one another through our hospitality is being in a relationship with God the Father who sent Christ. This life is sacramental. We share the body of Christ and we become what we eat. So in our theology, we have two sacraments, the holy baptism and the holy communion. And both sacraments demonstrate our relational dependency on God or in, in one another. Through holy baptism, we become the, mem the member of the body of Christ. Many parts, but one body. In Holy Communion, we share one body of Christ, and through that, we affirm our communion in the work of the Trinity and to one another and God's creation. So the father of Reformation, Martin Luther, advocated and wrote, my brother is my Christ. I see Christ in you, and you see Christ in me. So last year, this time, June 2nd, was our second day in Alexandria. We were not even part of this congregation. I remember the first day we came to this congregation, the ushers in front of the door were, were Ardell and his wife, Linda. And their smile and hospitality in front of the door were so welcoming for us. And they end your hospitality for me and for, for my family encountered us with God's face. So we experienced God in you. And I hope you feel and see God in me and my family. So I believe that in the world that's running so fast, the little things, the hospitality and the love we receive from one another enables us to see and feel Christ in this world. I believe that our Trinitarian faith resists the modern and individual lifestyle that makes us, and that makes us believe I am enough. I can do it alone. And instead, God's dependency on one another, God needs each other. And being and needing the other for God's fullness reminds us that we are not complete by ourselves. We need the other to be full and to live a Christian life in this world. The identity of the church and the call of the church is at the same time Trinitarian and it's based on practices and vocation and action in life. There is no church without love and loving work for others. The mission and the call of the church is accepting and receiving all as we sing. We are church not because we have this building, but because of our hospitality, because of our mission and embodied presence in the world. Jesus complicates the message a little more by even saying, it's not being hospitable to the people you know, to the disciples, or to the people who look like you, but it is by giving cold water to the little ones, the vulnerable, and for the people who cannot speak or who do not have even a water to drink. So giving a cold water, what is this? For most of us who have refrigerator or running water in our house or in our apartment or in our building seems a little out of context. Yes, especially when Jesus was in this world giving water from a jar, from the jar especially in the hot and desert area was unexplainably important, especially for the little ones, for children and for, for, for women. But I believe still there are many women and children in our world who struggle because they don't have clean water to drink. Many women and children are dying because they don't have enough to eat. Many elders and adults are struggling and dying even though they want to live a little longer for their grandchildren. They are dying because they don't have health care. 
So what Jesus is saying about giving cold water for the little one affirms what our congregation is doing for others. Our engagement and ministry for people suffering from mental health, the concert we did a couple of weeks ago, and our service and ministry, food packing for the elementary school students, and many more you can see in the bulletin. The work we are doing affirms what Jesus is calling being hospitable and a disciple of Jesus. That's our call and our hospitality. And the Holy Trinity is even pushing us more to share and to be that in this world, in the everyday. So we can't be disciples without thinking of the little ones. We can't live a life of a Christian without sharing our time, our money, our love and presence with those who need our love and hospitality. For those who are struggling because of mental illness, physical illness, economic and social disorientation, lack of resources, we are called for them. We are the disciples, and we are modeling the life of the Trinity in this world. So today, we are being called to the life of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by an act of hospitality and love to one another, and the act of justice and praxis for life near us and far from us, even for the people we don't know, we never even see, to the places we have never been. God is calling us, our life together is thinking others, even who are far from us. We can and need to do more about the environment and global warming and advocate for, for countries, for developed countries, what they are doing. Our non-stop consumption creates days, flood, drought for many in other countries in the everyday. So what are the little things we can do to support others? Maybe prayer, maybe advocacy work, maybe responding emails, maybe writing letters. We need each other, and we can't live in this world without one another. So in this season of the Holy Trinity, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, how and what do we expect to hear and feel in the everyday? Especially for us as a congregation in this time of discernment, maybe a little unclarity about what and who will be our pastor. I would call all of us to continue loving and caring for one another. Let us continue feeling and being present to one another. I believe the Holy Spirit will continue guiding us in this sermon process as a congregation. The Holy Trinity is with us. The Holy Trinity is in us. So as a congregation, the season of discernment even reminds us to define our identity, our mission, who we are as a congregation. And today, I demonstrate that our identity is being Trinitarian. Our relationship is not hierarchical, but we are dancing with the Holy Trinity. We are part of this creation and we are dancing with the Holy Spirit. And we are marching with God in our practices of love and hospitality. So our work and everything we do in this congregation, including our discernment falling for calling our pastor, is not just ours, but we are participating in the work of the Holy Spirit. So let us believe and walk trusting that in each, in each step. You are my brothers and sisters, and I see God in you, and you see God in me. Amen. <laughs>